If you're looking to break the boundaries of how you structure your signal chain and have unlimited creativity when it comes to how you can build sounds inside of a multi-effects pedal, then you may be interested in what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Today we're gonna to talk about a guitar pedal that has the power of a modular synthesizer and it allows you to build signal chains that you would be pretty hard pressed to build with a conventional multi-effects. We're gonna be checking out this pedal from PolyEffects this is called the Bebo. So PolyFX have come up with this pedal, the Bebo. And what this is, is basically a modular synth style pedal. So a lot of guitar players don't really dive too far into the modular synth or Euro rack worlds because they're very complicated worlds. But what this does is this takes a lot of the routing and flexibility options of those sort of systems and puts them into a pedal. Now this pedal isn't designed specifically for guitar players, you can use this with synths, you can use it with anything you want, but we're gonna be looking at it today from a guitar player standpoint. Now this pedal, as I said, has the kind of functionality of a modular synth or a Euro rack. So what that means is all of the modules we build inside the pedal, we can route however we want to. So what that means is it gives us essentially unlimited options for how we're gonna build our signal. So before we check out the specs of this thing, I just wanna let you guys know this is a sponsored video today. So the guys at PolyFX are paying me to make this video and they have provided me with the Bebo that you see in the video. But as always, all the thoughts and opinions in the video are my own. So from the outside, this pedal looks pretty simple. I think you'll agree there's not much going on visually here. But inside, there is way more stuff than most of us could even comprehend. Now, from a guitar player's perspective, there's all of the usual suspects in there. So we've got chorus, we've got flanger, we've got tremolo, phaser, delay, reverb, all of those effects that we want. There's a compressor, there's a couple of EQ modules. There's some amp sims, which is the main thing we're gonna be talking about in this video, and some cab sims. And there's also something called a convolution reverb, which is a really cool thing, because what that is, is it's a reverb that is an actual capture of a real space. Some of the convolution reverbs in this pedal are actually rooms that I've been in myself to watch shows. So that's really cool because I can actually use the reverb from a venue that I've visited myself. You could also create your own and upload those as well. So layout wise, this is an incredibly simple pedal and very clean to look at. Everything we do is gonna be done via this touchscreen right here. So on top of the pedal, we've got three foot switches, A, B, and C, but these also double up. So if we press A and B together, we get D, and if we press B and C together, we get E. So technically there's five different foot switch assignments we can do there. And we have two rotary encoders. These are the endless types, so they just keep going and going. One of them is for fine tuning adjustments over parameters inside, and one of them is for course adjustments where we can do big jumps. But really the touch screen is the magic thing here. Connecting this thing up, we have a lot of different options as well. So there's four jacks here. Now you'd easily think that means stereo in and out, but what it actually is, is it's four in and out. So each of these jacks is a stereo TRS jack. So this is input one and two, this is input three and four, output one and two, output three and four. So we can basically connect four different sources and send this to four different sources. So if you're playing in a live environment, you could use this to run stereo to two amps or you could run into four different amps if you wanted. You can have up to four different bits of gear connected to the ins at all times, or you can use it the way that I'm kind of using it. And I'm sort of treating it as two different effects loops. So I'm using into one, going through a set signal chain that I've created and then out of one through other pedals, back into three through more stuff and then back out of three to wherever it's gonna go next. So I'm kind of treating the poly as if it's two separate things in my chain as well. So it's very versatile in that sense. You can set it up in a load of different ways. If you want to run two inputs or two outputs from any of these TRS jacks, obviously you're gonna need a TRS splitter cable, but if you just plug a single jack in, it will function as mono as well. We've got MIDI in and out with these mini MIDI jacks and it runs off a 500 milliamp nine volt DC. So it's quite power hungry, but I mean, that's to be expected with everything it can do. And there is a USB port here for updating the firmware. If you want to do firmware updates, you download it to a USB flash drive, plug it in here and the device does the rest for you. So really, I mean, there's not a lot to talk about in terms of how the outside of this thing looks or what it can do. So let's just plug it in now and take a look inside. All right, so gear-wise, I'm gonna be using my Vola Guitars Oz JRM for this. 
This is plugged straight into the Bebo and that's running into the TC Electronics Combo Deluxe 65, which is a pedal that simulates the sound of a 65 Deluxe reverb amp. I'm gonna be using that for the first part of the video where we talk about the effects built into the Bebo and then later on we're gonna talk about the amps and built in as well. Okay, so the interface of this is, as I said, all done via the touchscreen. So this is how it looks when you first boot up an empty preset. So there's nothing on the screen. So what we need to do is we need to use this plus sign here to open up the module browser. Now this is really cool because we have all of our options here laid out by category. So in the middle here, we can basically scroll through a list of everything in the pedal if we want to, or we can use these subcategories. Now you can favorite things. So there's a little heart icon and when you press that heart icon, it goes into the favorites option there and we unselect it by pressing. But then we have all the different effect options. So we have modulation effects, time effects, pitch and synth, utilities, level and dynamics, CV generators, amps, cabs and gain, MIDI and ported. Now, not all of these things are gonna be relevant for every player. Some of these things are synth specific, some of them are MIDI specific, but there's a few things that we can use as guitar players as well. We can also use the search bar, which brings up a keyboard and we can type in what we want there. And that will also find the thing that we need. So let's just go through a few different things. So modulation, we have, again, this is where a lot of the common things are gonna be. We've got chorus, we've got a couple of different choruses actually, an eight voice dimensional chorus, an eight voice dimensional chorus with an LFO. There's a chorus J, which is based on a Japanese synth chorus. There's a panna, there's a couple of flangers, harmonic tremolo, phaser, rotary, rotary advanced, stereo phaser, uh, there's a different type of flanger there, turntable stop, vibrato, and the emulate the dirty old lo-fi vinyl record sound. So that's really cool, because there's a bunch of cool things we can use there. So I'm just going to pick a chorus for now. So when you pick a module, it goes onto the screen like this. Now, at this point, if I play, nothing happens. And this is where the whole modular synth thing comes in, because right now, that's not actually connected to anything. So what I need to do is I need to create a signal path. So one, two, three, four down the side here are my inputs and my outputs. And then the bottom one that says AM is MIDI in and out. So it's in on the right, out on the left. Now one and two are obviously tied to the physical input one and two, three and four are tied to the physical input three and four. So if I was using a kind of mono approach, mono cable approach to playing stereo, so I had a jack cable in input one and input three, I would use one and three as my stereo in. If I'm using a split of TRS, I would use one and two. So obviously what you choose there depends on how you wire this thing up. But I'm playing mono for now. So my guitar is going into one. So I need to connect input one to my chorus module. So to do that, I hold the number one and then I touch the module and it draws a cable. Now I do the same thing to the output. So I hold the module, touch output one, because this is stereo, it's gonna ask me left or right. When you're playing in mono, it doesn't really matter, so I'll just pick left, and that is now connected. So I can obviously move the modules around the screen if I want. I can make the, you know, the visual signal flow look however I want it to look. So now, when I play, we should hear some chorus. If I come into the module by touching it, there are my parameters. <laughs> That's quite a nice chorus. There's a nice shimmer to that, and obviously I can move things like the depth. What I can do, as I mentioned, is I can use the rotary encoders as well. So when I touch a parameter, so let's say depth, I'll do again, we have this encoder, which does big movements, as you can see there, and then this encoder, which does very, very fine movements. As you can see there, that's hardly moving. It's really good for fine tuning what's going on. So if I wanted to add another module after that chorus, I need to disconnect the chorus. So to do that, I hold the chorus down and at the bottom there, you can see there's two little icons of a P and I press this one and that gives me my disconnect option. So I do that, go back and now I'm disconnected. So I can add other modules in after it. I'm just gonna delete this now by holding down and pressing the delete button. What that will do is that will clear the preset. 
So now I'm just going to go through a few other little options that we have. So inside modulation, we also have a rotary speaker. So we have rotary, basic and advanced. They're the same algorithm, but the advanced one just allows you to tweak a few more parameters. So in the chorus, you saw that there was only four parameters. If I use rotary advanced here, and I just quickly connect that up, and I go in, now we've got parameters for the horn, I've got the split, the character, the rotor, and the mix, so there's a lot more to tweak here, and that's before we even go to the drum. I've got a couple of different options there as well. And then at the bottom here I have stop, and then the chorale mode, which is slow, and tremolo, which is fast. So without touching any of those, here's how the rotary speaker sounds. <laughs> So that's quite nice because it actually has that ramp up and down thing going on. Now I could obviously deep dive and go crazy with the parameters there if I wanted to. We also have a harmonic tremolo. Now obviously you can see there's a ton of options here, so I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but we could pick a harmonic tremolo and let's connect that up to input one. <laughs> So that's quite a nice harmonic tremolo. I like that effect anyway. That's an effect that I really enjoy. Now, I'm doing this all by the touchscreen. So there is a way we can connect these to the foot switches as well, which we'll talk about later on in the video. And you can also do loads of cool stuff like you can assign additional foot switch modules, which when you press the foot switch, it modifies the behavior of how the effect works. So there's a lot of cool things we can do with the route into this thing. You can either view this, you know, on a very simple level, as in, We'll just treat this like a guitar pedal, or you can really go deep and add these modifying blocks and all sorts of other cool stuff if you're into that sort of thing. So now we're going to look at some reverbs. So I'm just going to go back into here and I'm going to go to time effects. Now there's a couple of different reverbs on offer. We've got the basic reverb, which we'll look at first. This is a basic kind of standard algorithmic reverb. So I'm just going to connect that up like so, get that in my signal chain. And then put it there just for now, so it's right in the middle. So when I press onto this, I have a lot more options here. So this is, that's the default reverb. So that in itself, quite a nice reverb. Now with the algorithmic reverbs, we have a mix control, which is here, this green one, and it's set to 50%. So it's 50-50 right now. So we do have, if we put that to zero, we do have some dry signal. We do have that coming through. I'm gonna turn the reverb off on the, actually it's already off. The reverb on the Combo Deluxe 65 was already switched off. So that reverb we heard there is just this. Or we can go full. So we can obviously adjust a lot of different things here. We've got bandwidth, decay, early versus late. We've got size, so that's gonna be the size of the room. So let's go for a really big room. Pre-delay, gain, density, and damping. So, I mean, as far as reverbs go, that's a pretty nice one. It's just a basic reverb, so you can't choose between, you know, hall, plate, spring, whatever. It is what it is, but it's a really good sounding reverb. Now, where the reverb stuff really gets cool is when we use, inside the time effects, we have these reverbs here. We have mono reverb, and there's one further down, which is stereo reverb. They're both the same. It's just one is mono, one is stereo. These are convolution reverbs. So these are captures of real spaces. So if I put this block in, 
put that right in the middle, and then I just link it up, and I'll show you the inside of this. So this is where the graphical interface gets really cool. So if I press this, it loads this screen. And this looks really pleasing because this has actual pictures of the units or the spaces that this models. So inside here we have physical hardware reverb models as well as spaces. So for instance, the Lexicon 480L. If we click that, and then we have all of these different presets for that one unit. So I could pick, for instance, whole large plus stage, and that now is gonna give me a reverb. But a convolution reverb, as you can hear there, is only a reverb tail, because the convolution reverb is just the capture of the reverb, not the thing you're feeding into the reverb. So obviously if you're capturing a space, you're not in that space to play your guitar to physically present the sound that's going to get reverb added. So what you need to do here is we need to create a parallel signal path, and this is really easy to do. We hold one, which is our input, and we press one, which is our output. And I pressed the wrong thing there. Let me do that again. I've got quite big fingers, so this can be a little bit fiddly, but there we go. So that's now drawn a straight line from one to one. What that straight line is with nothing on it is that's my dry signal. So if I'm just coming in here now and I just, uh, I just take this out of the chain, I don't know how to take that out of the chain, so I'm just gonna delete it for now. What I've done now is I've just connected one to one. Dry signal through. Adding the convolution reverb, because it's only a tail, we need to blend it with a dry signal like this. So we link it like a parallel signal, but using the same ins and outs. So this is now my dry signal, this is now my wet signal. And then inside here, once I've picked my option, I use this gain control to decide how much of that reverb I want. So now we have both. Now we have the dry sound mixed with that wet signal. So obviously I could go through all these different options. But what I really like is the space modeling on here. So there's a couple of different things. You can see when there's a little green sort of oval in the top corner, that tells you how many captures there are. So these are quite small to read, but obviously for the lexicon, there's 48 captures. But then over here we have seven captures of a concrete tunnel in the UK. There's five plus a left and right. So let's just pick number three. This is what your guitar would sound like in a concrete tunnel somewhere in the UK. And these are all spaces that have been physically recorded and modeled. So there's a couple of those. There's there's a couple of plate reverbs here, like the ENT140 plate, which you can put on the bright setting. So that'll be a real kind of studio plate reverb. But then we get into some venues as well. So we've got the Hinton Hall from Tennessee. There's a hall there in Berlin in Germany. The Lexicon 300 rack unit. Pool of the Black Star. Uh, I gotta lean in here because it's very small text on the screen. Uh, the Manitoba Legislative Building. So it's really cool because there's actually a little bit of text here about what the space is as well. So you can actually enjoy the reverb and learn about where it's from. Uh, let's go for this one. I'm just picking presets at random here. Quite a subtle one. Let's go for this. This might not be one of the crazier reverbs. There's quite a bit of decay on that one, actually. We have a collection of spring reverbs. There's a couple of different springs there. Obviously these are just as they come as well, so you can really fine tune them if you want. An Alessis Microverb, Studio B in Nashville, which is the birthplace of the Nashville sound. Quite 
quite subtle, but there is a bit of verb there. B Bristol Beacon. Now, this is a venue I've actually been into quite a few times, actually, to watch shows. So I've heard this room quite a few times, which is quite cool. This is one of the things that I talked with Loki from Poly Effects about when I met him at NAM was that I'd been to this actual theatre so I could kind of verify that, you know, I can't remember exactly how the reverb in the room sounded, but, you know, it's a capture of a space that I've actually heard myself. <laughs> Now that's a good example of a reverb that's built in here that's quite full on and it kind of overshadows your dry signal. So if that's the case, pull the gain down. And then you find that kind of sweet spot where you get the reverb plus your dry signal. There's another one that I've actually been to as well, which is a bit further down, it's the Shepherd's Bush Empire in London. This is actually another room that I've been in quite a few times. I mean, there's a ton of them. Even a red phone box somewhere in the UK. If you ever wondered what your guitar and a phone box would sound like. Not a ton of reverb there because it's you know, quite a small space. Winter Forest. That's more of like a distant reverb. It's not that direct. It's kind of like a, a subtle ambience on the end of things. It's really cool that it's real space modeling because if you have been to some of these places, then that's really cool. The London Palladium, that's quite a big venue. That's an interesting one because the London Palladium is a big theatre venue in the UK. Now, I spend most of my time playing at theatre venues and I have noticed this thing as well, that a lot of those theatre venues, they have a lot of reverb, but a very short decay time. So this is kind of the same, like if you play, it's a big space, but it doesn't ring very much because these rooms are purpose designed to sound big, but not always to ring in the same way. So that's quite a good representation of that. You can also import your own as well. So if you've got any, you know, convolution spaces that you think are really cool, you might hear a room that you think that sounds great. You can record your own space and reverb and put it in here as well. So that's a really cool feature because, you know, you've got everything from a convenience store to Poly HQ to a tunnel to the, the Cornish paddocks. The ultimate kind of reverb there really is an outdoor reverb because that's, technically endless. Even some caves, if you want to play guitar in caves, you can do that. And that's what your guitar would sound like in a cave. So the convolution reverb is really cool, I think. There's a ton of cool stuff you could do there. This also, if we delete that block, this pedal also has a delay. So also in time effect, we've got the delay module, I believe Loki said that the delay also was only delay tails. So what you have to do here is you also have to put a dry signal through like this. So the delay will be added onto my dry signal. So inside the delay, we've got all the usual things that you could imagine that you would need to tweak a delay. So with the tone in the lower positions, you get more of that bright repeat. And then in the higher positions, kind of fades out a lot quicker. That is kind of where you can turn this from like a clean digital thing to like an analog delay. Get some of those really nice warm repeats. The delay time is shown in milliseconds here. So I've currently got that on 250. Now obviously we can use these controls here to adjust it. 
because this is truly digital and algorithmic, there's actually no cap on the range. So my delay range can go from one millisecond, so that's like the fastest slap back you could ever imagine, to a max time of 32,000 milliseconds. So there's a bit of a wait time there. So if you want a really long delay, you've got that as well. It's quite a useful delay, I think. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to build a quick signal chain. So let's just put a bunch of different things into my signal chain. So I'm gonna go level and dynamics, and I want to add a mono EQ. I also want to add from my dynamics a compressor. So I've got a mono compressor. And I also want a chorus, which I'll put, put there for now. I want a reverb, so I'm going to go for basic algorithmic reverb that at the end, and I'm also going to put in a delay just because that's always handy to have. So I've got five effects blocks there now. So we've got EQ, compressor, chorus, delay, and reverb. So I'm going to chain all these up, so I'm going to connect my EQ, my compressor, my chorus. Now remembering that my delay only is the tails, I'm going to go straight from the chorus to the reverb, and then the chorus to the delay. So I've got this stereo split there going on where I'm getting a dry signal out of the chorus, and that's also feeding a dry signal to my delay, and then my reverb to my output. Now none of those things are connected to foot switches, but this is really easy to do. So to connect something to a foot switch, you press it, or hold it, and then you touch the foot switch you want it to be connected to. So I'm gonna put my EQ on C, and you'll notice that a little C appears there. This is a really cool graphical EQ, so we can just put a bit of a top boost on there. There's a Q control here if you want to widen it. There's a slight delay in the graphical interface updating after you touch it, but that's fine. So I'm going to connect my compressor to E, so I'm going to press both those at the same time. So when I press these two together, my compressor goes on and off. My chorus, I'm going to connect to that one on its own. My delay, I'm going to connect to this one on its own. And then my reverb, I'm going to connect to these two together. You can also connect multiple modules to the same foot switch as well, just by doing one module, connect it, another module, connect it, and then you can add multiple things to the same module. But now, I have an entire signal flow, if I remember my foot switch assignments, mapped out. So I have my dry signal. My EQ that adds a top boost, my compression, just tightens everything up, chorus, My reverb. And my delay. And then obviously you can tweak the parameters to suit whatever you need. Those are just the out of the box parameters straight away there. You can use this to save presets and you can create set lists with it as well. So in this option here, you have load a preset and you have favorites where you can again favorite different presets. There's a bunch built in. And when you create one, this little yellow icon appears underneath it. So this preset here, this is my main preset. So I can show you how I'm using this. It's not rigged up so you can hear it right now, but this is how I'm using this. So I'm going in, input one, close to the start of my chain, through a compressor, and then out of output one. Then it goes through my drive pedals on my board. Then I come back in at input three, and that runs through chorus, a rotary, and a delay, and then out of output three into other pedals. So I'm kind of using this as two separate pedal chains in one as well. Inside the preset library, there's a bunch to get you started as well, like advanced rotary, AKG reverb, 
uh, Black Star, whatever that one is. Let's load that up. That's a stereo reverb. I'm only set up in mono right now. So you're only hearing part of that, but it's a great sounding reverb. This kind of shows you some of the routing options because everything's going into one, but it's going out stereo, but it's going, there's two dry paths, one to each stereo feed. There's a path that goes to the delay only then to the reverb and a path that goes to the reverb only and to the out. So, I mean, routing really, there's no limits of what you can do here. You can also create set lists so you can put patches in order by song. The only thing that limits that is it does take a second to load the patches. Like if I click my, my patch, it takes a while to load it. It's not an instant switch between the patches, but you can use all of these to try out a bunch of different things. Reverb and cab, there's a cab sim in there. So if you're using an amp sim pedal, you can run it through that preset. There is quad delay, which is uh, delays running across four different outputs. Obviously I'm only going mono, so you're not getting the full picture there, but if you were running out four outputs, you'd have four different delays running there. There's a tuner preset. There's actually a tuner module built into this as well, which is quite useful. But that's just a preset there of a tuner that you could use. You could also add the tuner module into any other preset and assign that to a foot switch as well. So the final thing we're going to talk about is the amp modeling. Now the amp modeling in this is done with what is called NAM or NAM technology, which stands for neural amp modeling. So it's kind of the same principle as like a Kemper in that it's a model of a specific sound. So you're not gonna have amp models in here that you can infinitely tweak. There's a couple of parameters you can turn on and off and move, but there's nothing you can sort of tweak an entire spectrum of, you know, an EQ range, for instance. So to use the amp modeling, we need to connect up using the amp cabin gain section. There's also some bass ones in there as well, but the amp NAM block. And we then need to go back into that same section and choose a cab block. So there's mono cab, but there's also a stereo cab. So I'm gonna go for mono. So I'm gonna link those up, amp, cab, out. Now the amp NAM section is very power hungry. So you're probably not gonna be able to load too much else on top of that. You may get away with a delay or an algorithmic reverb, but you're not gonna be able to stack a ton of things with this as well. So first of all, I'm just gonna pick my cab type. So I'm gonna show you there's a huge library of cabs. Same thing again, we've got the visual thing, but there's also multiple captures of the same cab. So we've got, let's say this one here, uh, Celestian G12H, but there is 67 different captures. So if I go in, there's all sorts of different things, like 57 in the center, off axis, one inch away. Uh, there's different mic types. There's 58s, there's C4Ks, there's M160s. So I'm just gonna pick a 57 in the center because that's pretty standard mic sound that most people know. So my cab is selected, but there are obviously other cabs in there. There's a one by 10, there's some custom cabs from Leon Todd, there's a JCM 2000 two by 12, there's a plexi cab, a buggy cab, a Randall cab, a matchless cab, an orange cab with V30s in there. You get the idea. Then amp nam. Now here are the amps that are currently profiled inside the pedal. I'm probably gonna take a guess that Loki will add more at some point, because there's currently like 14 in there. I'm guessing he's gonna grow that library. So like I said, it's kind of limited in the sense of what you can do. So let's just go for like a clean one, first of all, the Milkman half bind. All I have is mo uh, volume, mid or high. Th those are my options. <laughs> So nothing too crazy there when it comes to tweakability. Some things obviously have more. Uh, Tone King Imperial, we have the lead and rhythm channels and three different volume options.
So quite simple sounds, but, you know, effective sounds. Victory Sheriff 44, we've just got two volume options there, high and medium. That's kind of stacking the channels into each other. We've got a Soldano SLO30. This is a very tweakable one because we've got bright overdrive crunch and the parameters of the overdrive knob being low, medium, or high. So let's turn everything off and start low. Kind of a cleanish sound. Probably not what Soldano's known for. Overdrive. on tap of that one there's a morgan js32 i think that says it's a js12 it's very small text <laughs> actual amount we can tweak the amps is quite limited they're very responsive feeling so with that amp if i play softer it still kind of cleans up a little bit if i dig in we get that kind of compressed boomy low end which is really nice now obviously i haven't played a lot of these so i can't vouch for the authenticity of how the magnetone twilighter sounds against an original one but it does sound good and it does feel good to play there's a couple of high game ones as well like the Dietzel V VH2, so not quite the VH4, but again, classic amp. Uh, let's go high gain for this, because that's what we expect. I mean, that... To me, it doesn't sound as full as a Dietzel should, but I've not played that particular model, so I can't vouch for that. In my head, it should just be a lot higher gain. That's a Friedman BE50. That's kind of like your hot rodded Marshall type thing. Now, you can hear that, obviously, the amps are very varied in their uses. There's everything from clean to crunch to that Morgan's really cool because it's like a broken up tweed thing. We can also obviously change the cab types to suit. So you've heard everything there through a Celestian G12H, but I could put it through, for instance, an orange vintage 30. So just the Celestian tone once more. <laughs> And that completely changes it. And you can use your own IRs for this as well. So if you've got your favorite speaker IRs that you want to use, you can put those in there as well. Randall 4x12. That one's very loud, so I'm gonna turn the gain down because that's clipping my interface.
Boxless obviously has more of a small amp quality. We could even run the Friedman into a Super Champ 1x10 with a Neumann U87 in front of it. <laughs> Which surprisingly works quite well. You wouldn't think that a Friedman B50 would sound great into a 1x10 amp, but it does work. There's a couple there from Leon Todd, and like I said, you can obviously import your own IRs if you need to. There's a few classics here, like the Mesa Studio 22. I'm pretty sure there was an amp model for that one as well. We come back into here. No, I was mistaken, but we can have the cab at least. It would be quite nice to see some matching amps and cabs as well, because obviously there's a lot of classic cabs in there. So it would be nice to see some of that replicated with some of the amps too. But let's try this one again. <laughs> That's really, really kind of thick and fat sounding. I think that Morgan would probably pair nicely with that 110 Super Champ as well. I think that would be quite a nice combination. <laughs> So that's a really nice combination. So this thing can really do everything from some great cleans through to obviously more higher gain stuff. If you wanted to get into more of the fine tuning of the amp sounds, you could probably try and add an EQ block. If you're not using an amp sim that's super CPU hungry, you can probably get away with having one of those EQ blocks. The other thing you could do is run an EQ pedal with this so you can shape that tone a little bit more. If you're not fully happy with the limitations that the amp capture offers you know there there are ways around that but it would be cool to see more functionality added to that section with future updates which i'm sure will be because this thing has been updated a ton already and loki's always working on new firmware updates so it would be cool to see where this amp modeling stuff goes next because this is quite a new feature to the product so it would be nice to you know see that expanded allow more user customization allow you to add your own amps and also download more amps because like I said, there's only 14 on here. There's pretty much everything you would need. If you need an amp sound, there's something in there that you can use and you know, you'll find a sound that works for you, but it would be nice to see that expanded in future updates, like I said. But yeah, that is the Poly Effects Bebo. So, I mean, obviously it's a very intensive, complicated pedal that does a ton of different stuff but you can make it quite simple and you can get some quite basic guitar sounds out of it if you need to, like some of the ones we've talked about in this video. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think of some of the sounds of the Poly, especially the amp models, because these are the new thing that Loki's talking about right now. When I spoke to him about doing this video, that was the thing that he said, let's talk about the amps a lot because those are the new thing. So feedback from the people that, you know, consume the videos of these products and use these products is essential for him knowing how to kind of progress the product next. So let me know what you thought of some of the amp sounds down below in the comments. If you own or have played any of these amps that I've mentioned, let me know how the model stacked up against what you heard because that feedback will be invaluable for the company growing. Now this is the sort of thing that I think will be the future of effects pedals. I think we're gonna see more and more pedals going down this way where we have complete control over everything we want. Because with this, the only limitation is the CPU. Outside of that, we can do whatever the hell we want with routing, with effect order, with how we want to put things. It really doesn't matter. We can do it because of the way this thing's built. And I think we're going to see more and more of this growth and this kind of advancement in the guitar world. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. And while you're doing that, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. And go check out the links down below in the description. Check out Poly Effects. 
Check out the stuff they do because they do some really cool battles. Check this thing out. It's great. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching.